Hello there, Internet. Magua here, and I got another Legends of Rune Terror video for you guys today. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to play Leona. Yes, Leona. I <laughs> didn't think I would ever play her again on my channel, honestly. She's not, shocker, one of my favorite champions, uh, because Leona is a little bit linear in regards to uh, the way you play her and the Solari archetype in general, right? Uh, Daybreak as a keyword slash mechanic is a bit dull compared to other you know mechanics in the game in my opinion right so i haven't, I haven't been too crazy about leona the same way i'm not too crazy about diana as champions right even though uh, every now and then they are actually fun to play don't get me wrong but uh like i said uh the biggest aspect of this is like we have to play our daybreak units on curve right so uh when it comes to combining leona and yasuo i kind of like went back to wanting to play yasuo with noxus because it is a more flexible sort of archetype, but uh, I gotta give a big shout out to the Spanish team for the European Masters, you know, comprised of CDS Fall, uh, Raxitos, and Nudgewick, as they designed a Yasuo Leona deck for that tournament that I really, really liked. So I took that list and I modified it a little bit uh, for ladder. As I feel like this sort of strategy has a lot of good matchups in the current meta. More so than before. Because I, I did a video on this like at the very beginning of the Targon release. Uh, I, I think it was my second video. I made Leona and Yasuo. I was very excited about playing Yasuo outside of Noxus, right? But that deck was obviously <laughs> terrible compared to this one. It was my first attempt. And there's a lot of reasons as to why uh, this sort of build actually has a really good... Uh, you know matchup environment in general as of right now the reasoning is first of all we are playing a mid-range deck with access to disruption in the form of not only deny but also nobify nobify is even better now than it was before due to the prevalence of go hard in the meta the ability to counter an early go hard and prevent them from shuffling more copies of that card as well into the deck slowing down their win condition goes a long way also running deny uh in this build allows us to not have to worry about the likes of ruination vengeance we can navigate around those things really well and we're also playing a full set of bastion bastion is incredibly good in this deck because both of our four drops are super menacing engines that can uh really go along like it these sticking on the board for several turns can lead to massive value and momentum. And the same can be said about Raven, really, as uh, the constant daybreak is really important for us to really go off with Leona and Diaso together. So ultimately, having the ability to interact and disrupt uh, removal and preserve our, our key units alive is what makes this deck so strong that combined with access to stun we have steel tempest we have because of palm <laughs> leona's prox and the mvp motherfucking sneaky zebels who i uh, added onto this deck as a one-off for certain matchups like go hard amongst others in which they have really low you know for example tom catch soraka as well right sneaky zebels can come in alongside yasuo and it can be our own you know, intimidating roar on an elusive stick, right? <laughs> Which can be pretty backbreaking, right? In the right scenario. In other scenarios, like for example, against fearsome decks, uh, it's basically a five mana 3-3 with elusive, which is not great, but not absolutely atrocious, right? So we play a one-off of Sneaky Zeebles, and Sneaky Zeebles does things. God damn it. Believe me or not, he, d he does do things. Whether they are amazing, that, that, that's more debatable, but... Shout out to Sneaky Zeebles. He belongs in the deck, all right? Shut up. Okay, so we're also playing the Infinite Smite Splitter instead of the likes of Yone because this card is uh, kind of an upgrade, <laughs> really. It, it loses the immediate impact of Yone, like Yone can uh, deny a life-threatening attack, but at the same time, uh, uh, at the same time, Yone uh, does not stop open attacks, right? Which is otherwise a very... You know, something that we can definitely expect when playing this deck, because not only are we playing stuns, but we're also playing Leona, which requires us to activate a Daybreak card to stun something, right? So, more often than not, our opponents will be looking to set up open attacks against us, which is why the Infinite Mind Splitter is ultimately better than Yone here, as we can just effectively shut down two units for the entirety of the game, and get them off the board even with the Asso as well, in case our opponent is trying to slowly but surely 
you know, take down the infinite mind splitter. We can uh, have you also finish off the job in that regard. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a decklist right there. Shout outs to Hush as well. And of course, Pale Cascade. We're playing Target. We'll play a full set of Pale Cascade. Uh, Hush really does give us uh, the edge. The reason why I wanted to showcase this deck today, not only does the match, is the matchup against Go Hard good, but it, it has like pretty decent matchups against uh, most decks uh, out there, including. Fiora Shen. I have to think like for a second before I say that because my brain is always Shiora Fen. I do not know why. Maybe that's what their name should have been. But unfortunately, I I, I can't really <laughs> elaborate on to that argument too much. But uh, Fiora Shen is a very popular deck. I uploaded a video on it yesterday, so it's very likely that the deck is a little bit, is even more popular as of today. So this is a counter, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, I may do this more on... Uh, more so in the future as well as I upload decks. You know, the next day I can give you guys the counter to the deck that I uploaded the day prior. <laughs> so you can get free wins on people spamming, you know, and, and not adapting uh, quickly enough. So, yeah. Uh, the Fiora Shen matchup is actually pretty neat because we have access to uh, Steel Tempest and Cossip Palm to deny their attacks. We can hush through their barriers and ultimately our beefy curve combined with Yasuo into stuns. Uh, is definitely a bit overwhelming for that archetype and it feels good to have a solid matchup against such a high tier and popular deck and that's basically where i'm gonna end it at because otherwise i'm just gonna be rambling on forever thank you guys for watching stay tuned for daily legends of runeterra content leave a like for yasuo or even leona i mean if you're one of those i don't know, one of her like five fans then good for you <laughs> leave a like for her you know not for me for her okay it's not for me i swear and I'm gonna stop talking. Have a great one. Hope you enjoyed the games. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, here we go. Go hard to start things off. I wonder how the matchup will go. We do, we do have uh, several ways to disrupt their their plays. Though, sneaky uh, Zebos is actually a card that I'm gonna keep in my opening hand because uh, the majority of their deck is actually comprised of two attack units, <laughs> so I can actually stun their entire board potentially. Uh, I also like the Bastion. I'm not so sure about the Hush initially. I'm going to keep everything except for the Hush. Uh, Steel Tempest, also not incredible, but not terrible. Kind of like reminds me of uh, Chernobyl. I, I, <laughs> I watched it recently. Really good show. Highly recommend it. Now that it's our turn to attack, we're going to develop the, uh, the Shield Bearer. Instead of developing her last turn when our opponent had no unit to threaten us with, we're going to make use of the health this turn that we get to attack to deny a blocker. Because of this, uh, he can't block us with this. I mean, he can, but he will, you know, lose out on that exchange. And this is the turn where we want to play uh, your boy Yasuo. I'm going to block here, I think. The problem with that uh, that block is that it, it does enable the the spear. I go where the road takes, takes me. So I'm gonna develop uh, Yasuo here. Uh, Nopify is a card that we run as a two of in this deck. Uh, two take this matchup into account. All right, so he does play Gangplank on curve. Okay. One blade, one purpose. We do want to get rid of the keg more than anything here. We want to be reactive with our Bastion. Even though we will be burning one mana here, it's fine. Ultimately, this this Gangplank is uh, pretty weakened. I'm going to go for the Steel Tempest. Hazaki! Hazaki! Get a little bit of damage on Gangplank. Uh, as we pass here, we are... Uh, behind in card advantage. Uh, we would like to develop Raven, but be nothing left when I'm done. Just the screams of a giant. Mm -hmm. right. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> <I'll cure. laughs>
That's the BF though. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dogs and cats, fish. How about we sneaky zebels? Let's go for it. For the thumbnail. We get to make a considerable progression towards uh, Yasuo's level up while still having deny backup in case they have something like Ruination or Vengeance. And we still have Nopify for the go hard, Never man. Lost a fair All right. right. Blue as the serpent. If the ever threatens the level up with the fade, we can just uh, concuss the palm to kill it. Some things never dull. Get a nice hit off the air, and I like that game one. I get to showcase uh, the Zebels, right. because he's threatening us at this point. We will palm. I will follow this path until the, the end. end. Weeb mode engaged, I repeat, weeb mode engaged as they commit to the pick a card to try to level up to fate, we knock it out. But that's that's why it's important to wait for the opponent to commit. And the fact that we stuff this Nopify is huge, right? Because we can counter, like counter and go hard is really neat because we also counter the, uh, the part of the spell that shuffles more copies into the deck, right? So we can slow down their, their go hard significantly here. Go on. Daylight breaks on the battlefield. I'm gonna develop uh, Leona. I probably shouldn't have played Leona so early. I got a little bit impatient there. I, I, I maybe could have passed there because, uh, you know, this pool shark play was a, obviously like a, a bait. For me to, you know, spend some mana so they can navigate around my turn a little bit better. Uh, and killing off a 2-2, two -two, I mean, it's not really... Okay, now, now, now it's fine. As long as we keep this Nopify enabled, we're good. It's unfortunate that we can't play Raven. Uh, I don't want to develop the Soya Shield Bear. I do want to go Raven, though. Well, I... Yeah. Daylight, I also, I want to bait a big boy play from him, right? As, as long as I have this deny. Like, this disruption is what makes this deck really neat, right? The the combination of... Of, like, really... A really strong curve and good stats with just deny and nobify makes for a pretty damn good deck in the meta. Go with the flow. Okay. Some things never die. Move with purpose. Move with purpose. Feel the sun's glory. I'm gonna attack with everything. I'm gonna I'm gonna drag uh this powder keg though. Clear off. You can't do this. If that is a withering whale, I, I, I want to keep this seven mana because I want to have deny and uh, nobify enabled. Ain't nobody got time for that. And because this deck, that's one of the weaknesses of uh, Twisted Fate Go Hard, by the way. Because these decks love to play Zap Sprayfin and only have Go Hard and Glimpse Beyond as uh, spells that are three mana or less, even though some variants do run. Uh, Black Spear, but because of the consistency of drawing Go Hard with Zap, you don't want to run stuff like Vile Feast, which would otherwise synergize really well with your deck and allow you to make better use of your kegs that way. Because I know that they're very rigid regarding uh, their plays with the kegs, like most of them are slow speed, I can just deal with that. Even if they stack two of them, I'm not particularly worried about it because they're, they're way less flexible in general. Um, I think I'm going to develop the uh, Solari Soldier. Uh, shield bear. Clad in shining sunlight. I am the bulwark against darkness. Cool story, girl. This is why we're gonna be playing uh, this level up Leona, so that next turn, the the moment we go for a daybreak uh, effect, 
we will be able to trigger the stun immediately as well. Uh, double Bastion alongside Deny and Nopify. Like, this is the perfect hand considering this board state. That's the first uh, go hard. And we're gonna go ahead and say no. Nine. We don't really need to do anything else. We have a, a game winning board state here. So we just pass, we play reactive. We deny them their game. Man, what if I deny? No, I can't, can't deny this. All right, so that's the first, uh, that's the first go hard that actually resolves. Neither the flames nor the deaths could claim me. For three mana, what could they do? They could have something like a. Uh... Nah, this is too good. It's too good. Too good. Yep. Because <laughs> not only do we knock out Gangplank there, we trigger the Leona and kill off the Doom Beast. So. Soul Invictus. And because we we countered the first go hard, it, it's actually uh, pretty much at that point it's. It's safe to say that it is impossible for them to have uh, a pack your bags play, which uh, you know just makes it that much better. Uh, really, really highlighting the the utility of both deny and nobify and the bastion though. That bastion on the crumble was so backbreaking. That was crazy, dude. And I'm gonna go ahead and say sneaky zebels MVP because reasons and thumbnail. <laughs> so let's go around, dude. All right, check it, Fearsome. This should be a pretty good matchup. This is one of the reasons why we are running uh, this this champion combination, right? Uh, I like the Leona. Uh, I don't like the Bastion in this matchup. It has little to no utility at all. Uh, Concussive Palm is good, and Pale Casket is always great. Even though I would like to find... Oh, there we go. <laughs> Uh, earlier curve uh, Solari units, which we do. Um, I don't want to develop this here, though. I, I want to actually like get an attack off from this. Raise your weapon, Sunwood. Follow the horizon. Now we can develop Solar Priestess alongside Pale Cascade potentially, unless they decide to open attack. But I don't think this deck will ever aim to do that. Let's take the meteor share. Back heretic. The dawn has arrived. Carry her light across the mountain. Glorious light rains down. I think uh, I think playing Leona here is ultimately better. Getting her on the board. I pull the string. I'm gonna play around the uh, frenzy skitter. Alright. 
we took a bit of an, uh, an excessive hit there, even though we did have Concussive Palm, uh, but I, I did want to navigate around that. This uh, Seabull's ear is a, a little bit um, useless. My me. I'm going to resort for the, uh, the Shield Bear. I'm going to resort to the Meteor Shower to eliminate one of the Mist Rates. Also paying the Wraith Collar so that my Solari Shoulder can trade into it. I'm going to show some Empathy first, and then I'm uh, going to reveal my true intent. <laughs> okay. They're coming. Right, obviously one of these goes here. You go here. Face my shield. Try to leave a death. I'm gonna go for the Conquest of Palm. As long as we keep deny for the harrowing, we can uh, navigate around the uh wait, wait, is this? Is this actual Thomas from 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 Czechia? I just realized. I I think this may very well be the case. Uh, I do want to preserve that, so I, I am gonna hush here. Well, let's see, drew into another pale cascade. We should be fine. Have an atrocity because I, I, I would have been wide open there for an atrocity right now I can block this board that's not gonna go for the attack Raven would be really neat here. Um, I'm not sure if we'll be able to uh, power through. They, they are down to two cards, naturally. Uh, even if they do have something like Lin's Vion, we will not resort to deny. We need to deny the harrowing every single time. So obviously stuff like Lin's Vion is not what we want to see. We won't counter the defensive harrowing. I think I, I'm not sure, but this may be like Thomas from the uh, Czechia team, but I'm, I'm not. I'm not completely sure. Like I, I could be wrong. I know his name was Thomas, but I, I wasn't. I'm not sure about the the, the other portion of it. Okay, there's a pill cascade. Brrr. 
Or I just uh, soften him up a little bit. Yeah, we have to do this, otherwise we're dead. <laughs> Bask in the lights radiance. Bask in the lights radiance. And now Need to stun anything with this effect. Sometimes a five mana three three with elusive is actually not terrible. <laughs> Sneasel, Sneasel, Sneaky Zebels, aka Sneasel, MVP of all games. All right, round three. All right, now we face against Ranu. I'm not sure who Ranu is, but uh, they're pretty high ranked and they're playing Ash Frostbite mid range. Um, Ash is certainly a bit of a scary matchup. We're going to drop the Guiding Touch. Keep the Hush because Hush can actually counter a Frostbite, right? And uh, we're also going to keep the remainder of our curve. <laughs> Let's just run to another one. It's nice to see Raven in there as well. Turn one bird is not something that we're ever really happy to see. You know, sometimes Solari decks are pretty straightforward. Victory requires a sharp blade. Devotion through battle. Gotcha. I'm gonna take the the falling comet for removal. If he wants to utilize the uh, the glory seeker to throw into this, that's fine. Uh, we actually encourage him to do this in a way because we we threaten him with a meteor shower, and a meteor shower w would allow us to pick off his unit. So that that was pretty much the intent behind that. There. Um, I don't want to develop Leona without safety against crim. Uh, Cooling Strike. That's what Nobify is going to be. So we're going to respect that. And uh, instead, we are going to develop the Solari Shield Bear. Clad in shining sunlight. The trap is set. Burn away, doubt. I'm going to get three damage on him unless he wants to chump block with the, uh, the Umid Hawk there. Double Trapper is uh, certainly concerning, though. Because now we have to deal with one mana five fives. And uh, one mana five fives are pretty annoying. Uh, Infinite Mind Splitter could be really, really key here. He's got to stay healthy, not take too much damage. On the trail. Interesting. You cannot sway me. Again, I'm keeping this in the back. They walked around. I mean, I'd rather play you now. Our strength is forever at its zenith. Blessed daylight surrounds you. Reckoning is still enabled. It can't be. It no longer is, though. So now I do want to go with this. My faith protects me. The 
sunlight glides. Propulsion through battle! If they're out there, I'll spot them. Our opponent uh, developing quite the board here. Trifarian Assessor would be really, be really annoying. So we're gonna use this to jump block you. We're gonna block uh, into you. I will protect you. into the light. Can block here. We can take a bit of a hit. Strike while the planet's alive. I want to preserve this large uh, soldier for later. I just don't want to be over overwhelmed by. I do like that bastion. Do I want to play Infinite Mind Splitter? I I don't mind about these attacking as much. If I play Infinite Mind Splitter, I'm a dog. Faster than my arrow? I think not. There's our Yasuo. We're, we're we're very fortunate that our opponent has not drawn into uh into Triferring Assessor yet. Sorry about my phone there. Alright, we knock out Ash. Significantly hindering. Wow, the, the fact that we were able to play around that reckoning is huge. Like, I, I was actually very vulnerable there. I'm gonna go for a falling comet on the second Ash. Harsh winds. Yeah. Yasuo with the spell shield though can can take one frostbite. We're gonna knock out this this adversary hot card, denying the Trifarian Assessor, which is absolutely massive. Like I cannot like <laughs> express out of my way. All right. 
sunlight. The sun's splendor reveals. We have to open attack. We have a concussive palm to deny something like that. GG, baby! Atta boy! There we go! Woo! Alright! Wow! Soul Invectus, motherfucker! Gee, wow, that, that was a really... Yeah, we're actually, we're actually doing some really good climbing here. Where are we? Well, we're, we're top 100 all of a sudden. Not even bad, man. Not bad at all. Oh, man, these back-to-back -back sessions have been... Have been pretty damn good. We even got sneaky zebels to do something. Like, you have no idea how happy that makes me. <laughs> uh, obviously, we did get a little bit lucky that game. Um, it's important to note that our opponent did not draw Triferring Assessor. Uh, Triferring Assessor would have made a, ba a massive difference. And he had several instances in which he could have developed it. But at the same time, he did find double Avarus and Trapper early in the game. So, it's not like he got super unlucky with draws, right? Uh, but we, we were also fortunate that he did not have a flash freeze or a brill steel to combine with the uh, with the reckoning earlier as well because he would have been able to, to counter our our hush onto the uh, infinite mind splitter but hush definitely putting in the work there giving us a lot of uh, just very reliable honestly like a, a very reliable answer very flexible as well and uh, we really got to shine like or, or showcase the combination of these two champions and I, I, I'm much happier about this video than the, the first one that I did like months ago when Leona was released you know that was a pretty bad version of Leona Yasuo but it was my first take on it so I'm happy I got to uh, redeem the archetype a little bit here shout out to the Spain team for this uh, awesome deck idea and that's basically all I gotta say I'm a soul day thank you guys for watching stay tuned for daily legends of Runeterra content and I'll see you guys tomorrow